Hello, my name is Brian Hudgens, Technical Training Engineer at Palo Alto Networks. Today I'd like to introduce you to an exciting new concept that's available beginning with Pan OS version 7. It's called Equal Cost Multipath Routing, also commonly referred to as ECMP. So what does ECMP offer for you? Well, it gives you the ability to take multiple routes with the same cost that would traditionally only use one of the routes and give you the ability to load balance across multiple links. So let's take a look at a typical network as to what this would look without ECMP enabled. So we'll just draw kind of a fictitious network here, give it some various routes. Okay, so now what we'll do is we'll associate cost to these various routes. So from A to B, the route cost would be 4. From B to E, we'll give it a route cost of 4. B to C will be a 2. Uh, C to D, 1. Here is be a 1. Here will be a 2. We'll give these some various route costs. From B to G will be a, a 4. Uh, G to F, let's give it a 3. And from F to E, we'll give it a 4. So this would be a traditional uh, routing configuration in an enterprise environment. So let's say, for example, without equal cost multipath routing, if we wanted to get uh, traffic from, say, point A to point E, we would have multiple routes to go, all with equal cost. So let's take a look. For example, from A to B, B to E, so A to B and B to E would give us a cost of 8. From A to B to C to D to E, so A to B to C to D to E, is also going to equal 8. We also have a third route here going from A to B, B to C, and C to E. So A to B, B to C, and C to E. Also with a cost of 8. So you see the problem here that exists in an environment that does not have equal cost multipath routing enabled. What the virtual router inside the Palo Alto firewall will do is it will pick one of these routes as the preferred route, either A to B, uh, A to D or ACE, all with an equal cost of 8. So inside the virtual router, inside the forwarding table, let's say that the router decides that the best path to get from point A to point E will be going from A to B and then B to E. So this is the route that gets associated inside the routing table, inside the forwarding table, so A to B to E. So as you can see, without multipath routing enabled, uh, these other two links here are unused unless there's some type of a failover. So let's say, for example, that there is an outage between A to B to E, then this new route becomes the active route. So this one gets deleted. We, knew, we now update our routing table with A to B, B to C, C to D, and D to E. The benefit of having equal cost multipath routing enabled on the firewall is it allows you to take up to four equal cost routes and load balance across the various links. So let's take a, let's take a look at a second example, maybe in, a, uh, in an environment, put a couple of users over here. So let's say these users want to get through a router coming into the Palo Alto firewall. And let's, let's add a couple more routers into this. And let's bring these into yet another router here. Okay, and then finally, this particular client is trying to access a server down here. So let's give these networks some IP subnet. So let's say these users are over here on the 10 network. So we'll just give it the 10.10.10 .10 network. Let's give this the 11 network. We'll give this the 12 network. And finally, we'll say that they're trying to get over to the 13 network. So again, with, without equal cost multipath routing, the router inside the firewall, the virtual router, would only have a route going down to the server and only be able to utilize one of those routes. So by enabling equal cost multipath routing, we now need to decide how to load balance across these multiple links. 
The firewall gives you four different options to do so. So let's take a look here as this packet flows. I have a user here that wants to connect to the server here. So we start a session. As the packet arrives at the firewall, the firewall has to decide now that we have these equal cost paths here. Let's add a little more information to this. So let's say these are 100 meg links connecting the firewall. Okay, so we have two links, each 100 megs, two links, each 100 megs. So I could go this way to get to the server. I could go this way to get to the server. So without equal cost multipath routing, let's say it takes this route. I have a second user that also wants to get to the server. Again, they now take that same route. Meanwhile, I have a unused link down here. So now I go into the firewall, I go to the virtual router, and I enable equal cost multipath routing. So what this allows me to do is use up to four links. Now I only have two here that I want to load balance across. So what happens when my second user here also decides he wants to connect to the same server? So the firewall has to make a decision on how to load balance across these links. So you have four different options to do this. One of the options is you can use uh, IP modulo. So this is a simple calculation that's going to take information out of the source header of the packet, looking at uh, source, source IP, destination IP, do a modulus calculation on it, and determine if the packet and the session should be routed across this link or it should be routed across this link. It's a rather simplistic calculation. It doesn't use a lot of the uh, information out of the source packet. So if you're finding that you're getting not an equal distribution across these two links here, then we offer a IP hash as a second option. Now what the IP hash does is it allows you also to take, in addition to source and destination, it gives you the ability to take uh, source and destination ports in addition to the source and destination IPs. It gives you the ability as well to add a, uh, a hash seed value to the calculation so that you get a more equally distributed uh, balance across your two links here. So now as multiple sessions continue to come through the firewall, the firewall will continue to load balance through these various links. So those are the two common ones. Uh, for IP modulo and IP hash. Now, there are a couple of other ways to do your load balancing with ECMP. I mentioned there were four options. So the other two that would be available would be a standard round robin. And really all that's going to do is it's going to send one session across this link and then the next session across this link, the next one across this link, and so forth. It just goes back and forth. First, second, first, second, first, second, and so forth. So if you, need a bit, uh, if you need a bit more granularity to your control across these links, then there's a fourth option as well, which is a, uh, is a uh, weighted round robin. So let's take a look at what that does for you. Okay, so with weighted round robin, let's... Uh, Let's change the, uh, the link values here, the speed of these. So we no longer have 100 meg links here. Let's change these now to where we have, say, 50 meg links going across. So now we have a little bit different situation that we're working with. Here before we had equal cost relative to link speed, but let's say we still have equal cost relative to the routing table itself, but now the bandwidth across these links are a bit different. So you can see here across these links, we now have 200 megs to work with. Here at the bottom, we've only got 100 megs. So with weighted round robin, what we now have the ability to do is since we have 2x the bandwidth going across the top link, we can use weighted round robin and give the top link a value, say twice as much as the one on the bottom. Now what this means is for every uh, every one session that's going across the bottom, there'll be two going across the top. Again, we have more bandwidth here, so let's leverage the, the more bandwidth at the top. So you can associate your values for weighted round robin to give you a better distribution across multiple links that have equal cost, but potentially different bandwidth speeds. So hopefully here is a couple of examples. You've seen the ability to leverage equal cost multipath routing. If you've got a scenario where you traditionally would have, as I explained over here, a standard route that would populate your forwarding table with only a single route. 
meanwhile, not leveraging uh, up to three additional routes. So with equal cost multipath routing now enabled, you have the ability to leverage up to four full links. As I mentioned, this is supported on all Palo Alto platforms, both virtual and physical. It does give you the ability to have link failures as well. So it's uh, possible, say, that this link here were to fail. What normally would be load balanced across the top link now gets redirected across the bottom link. So it gives you the ability to operate ECMP in a, multi, in a uh, fully redundant mode as well. So those are the benefits of ECMP. A uh, few things just to keep in mind as you enable ECMP on your virtual router is uh, you enable ECMP on the virtual router. So in other words, ECMP is enabled per virtual router. So if you've got one virtual router, as I mentioned, you can support up to four links. If you have two vir virtual routers on the firewall, then of course you can support up to eight links. Uh, it is supported across all Palo Alto platforms, both physical and virtual. All layer three interface types are supported as far as sub-interfaces, aggregate interfaces, and so forth. And it does adhere to RFC 2991 for interoperability with the major routing manufacturers. One final note before you rush out and flip the switch and enable ECMP on your Palo Alto firewall, just be aware that turning on or disabling ECMP will restart the routing services on the router, on the virtual router. So you will need to schedule it at a time where you have a maintenance window to do that. Otherwise, I hope this has been beneficial and enjoy the world of equal cost multipath routing.